What is the now? Is the future even real? Do you remember the past? Is that even the past? Is that just a memory of the past? What if you could change it all, make it better? What if you made it worse? What if there's a ripple effect that you can't undo? Time travel. Let's talk about it. So I'm Dan. And I'm Nick, folks. We're old friends dissecting one topic at a time. People, technology, media, we've got it all covered. Each discussion here is a deep dive into our unique perspective. The taboo, forbidden subjects, they're all on the chopping block, baby. We don't pander to popular opinion. We might even get a little bit dirty. Warning, this podcast may contain mature language and sexual content and is for infotainment purposes only. So join us. Have a good time. Open up your ear holes, because we're going to fondle your follicles. Oh, baby. All right. We're back. We're alive. We're live. Mm -hmm. We're alive, and we're live. Folks. Another day, another episode. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the day where someone is actually listening sequentially and they figure it all out. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> the mysteries of the universe. Mm. We should encode a secret into the episodes somehow. Every fifth word spells something. <laughs> yeah. Be a lot of, actually, it wouldn't be that much work. It's just like the fifth word. If you rearrange all the letters in every tenth word, you can make... Another word. Alphabet soup. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have to go backwards in time to figure that out, what that was. The secret message. Mm. Time. Is there a Wikipedia on time? Can I rock a wiki on time? I love a good Wikipedia answer. I hope you have it open. Oh, I saw I saw you I open it. That's all right. Listen, we got, we got nothing but time this episode. So it's Wikipedia. Ooh. Time is the indefinite continued progress of existence and events that occur in apparently irrever irreversible succession in the past through the present to the future. Time is a component quantity of various measurements used to sequence events. To compare the duration of events or the intervals between them and to quantify rates of change or quantities in material reality or in the conscious experience. Mm. Time is often referred to as the fourth dimension along with three spatial dimensions yeah so you have a point over here and then it's over here you're measuring the change through that time was the most thorough yeah it was pretty thorough. explanation from wikipedia that i've ever heard for such a simple word and a simple thing so it's really like the perception of the now and our awareness that there was something and there will be hopefully something in the future and that things right. can time change is... it's the perception of change, change. Right. Time change, right? Is that mm. well? On one hand, I guess we. I don't really want to get into clocks. I think we discussed clocks at one point in the past. We did. Yeah, it was like the first clock was like a, a water clock. They water. filled with mm -hmm. an urn, a filled an urn with water, and then they would watch the water leave, and that'd be like the passage of time. Not mm. a very accurate passage of time. And then they got into like really complex Somewhere mechanical accurate. ones. Like uh, I'll just skip all the way to like Rolex, which is like uh, Swiss. Is it, well, how does the Rolex work? No, I don't know. I don't even. I don't even know. It's a. It's a delicate balance of like springs and mechanisms that keep it ticking. And then there's also like the the ones that you can like vibrate with your own mo like motion and they're perpetual motion. So if you keep moving, sunlight your arm, charged ones, right? Yeah. Well, not even how does sunlight. it tell time? Hmm. I mean, I looked up a second before. It was like three thousand or thirty million vibrations of a cesium one thirty two atom over That's, so you get an atomic I think even before that even right. even before that it's like quartz like mm -hmm. quartz has a resonant frequency that they would key off of and they'd be able to tell how many counts of quartz vibrations there were in a second and then go from there. Hmm. I guess because it was always constant. Yeah, yeah because it's what if your quartz material? is moving at half the speed of light <laughs> We're not getting into time no, violation no, right now, but I was just – We I can was do it. On We're right there because you're talking about cesium. That's an atomic clock. So you're okay. looking at the vibrations of cesium, I, I believe, mm -hmm. and then like – I might be wrong. It's been like 19 episodes since we did that. Yeah, it's you better been a look long up time. Second, definition of the second. Oh. How funny would it be? I hope I got the, the actual time right too. Imagine it's like, no, it's not. You were in remembering 
unremembered. No, I, I think it was cesium. Uh, let me do second cesium. One second. Come on. Do it. Do it. Ooh, I'm in it agony. Is, it is. So the second is defined by 9 mm. billion. One ninety-two million six thirty-one thousand seven seventy periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of cesium one thirty-three. So it's the vibration of a radioactive atom that defines what our second is, because that is, I guess, the finest vibration that we can measure with accuracy. Okay, that would make sense. So then it's a very high number. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make. Like, if you were at something that vibrated once every second, like, you could miss it by a lot. If you're doing increments of 9 million, you're not going to – there's not as big a, a chance of error. Is that yeah. the way to – yeah, okay. So that that feeds right. into time dilation. So we're defining time before we talk about time travel. Um, so they say, like, if you take an atomic clock and fly it around the Earth, that mm -hmm. it dilates ever so slightly because you're moving that much faster. I I – so, like, theoretical physics – and like the actuality of it, they say it's it's possible, but it's like such a fine difference that I don't think it matters. And also, if you're flying around the Earth, you're traveling more distance, and there are also other particles which we can't define in space. So there's there's unknowns which might be affecting the tr time travel of that device as it goes through our atmosphere. So we each... traveling more distance in the same amount of time that one's standing still. Yeah. So you, you sit a you sit a clock on the, the Earth's surface at sea level. Yep. It sits there. It rotates with the Earth though, so it's not not moving, correct? Mm -hmm. And then a plane is flying around the Earth with a, a clock that had the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And as the two over the course of let's say a year, you bring them back together, and they have different times on them. Yeah. The one that was flying time. and moving. Is ever so slightly younger. Yeah, right? but it's an Less atomic clock, passed. so it's like you're looking at if you're defining it by the the cesium, the vibration of the cesium is the vibration of the cesium the same in orbit as it is on the ground. I'm not sure. What is the answer to that one? I don't think it is the same because it could be bombarded with particles that we're not measuring. You know, if there's other radiation out there, it might. But is that how an atomic clock measures? It just records cesium. Vibrations or whatever. Hyperfine vibrations to the nine billionth. Seems like a lot of work in a second. Are you sure? Yes. Hmm. I'm just going to say yes because I don't want to read this article. As I mean, I mean, I just can't. I figure it's doing it backwards. Like we know the second is nine billion vibrations of the cesium, but I don't think it's actively counting nine billion every second. You know what I mean? It's not an active count lock, so I don't think. So, There's a way to know. So they have a, a continuous cold cesium fountain atomic clock in Switzerland. It started <laughs> operating in 2004, and <laughs> the uncertainty of that clock is one second every 30 million years. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty accurate. That's pretty damn good. That's, 30 million years? Yeah, 30 million years. It's in Wikipedia. It's got to be true. I used to look up science app all the time just for fun mm -hmm. as a kid. I'm sure you did the same. My dad would always say, who the hell knows that for sure? So I would <laughs> ask you, who the hell knows they're right about that? And I'd be like, dad, it's in the book. The book knows. And I'd be like, I'd be like, Neptune is on its side. You know what I mean? Uranus is sideways and the rings go this way. He's like, who the hell knows? And I'd be like, dad, do you not understand? I'm telling you, <laughs> it's on its side. It's sideways. It's like, who knows? How do you know? What's in the book? Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to make my dad say like Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld in a minute. Oh, oh. Who knows? It's just a guy. Is this guy writing a book? Is he writing a book? Maybe he's, he's late. He just wanted to say it was this, you know? He didn't have time. How do you know? To you're, not gonna, you're not going <laughs> to double check him. He's going to go to Mars, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's what he would say. <laughs> anyway, um, I do believe in time dilation. I don't. Really? Yeah. It, it follows Einstein's laws. But how do you measure, like, the you're getting so fine in the measurement of time that it's, like, ridiculous. It's, it's absurd. It's like I'm if you're traveling sure. light speed and, like, things are supposed to be bouncing around, it's like, how do you guarantee mm -hmm. that they're bouncing around normally? At well, light I don't speed? think they've measured anything at light, no. light speed because there's zero mass. There's a whole, there's a whole thing that goes on, right? 
Right. We just lost we just all our viewers. Minds. That's fantastic. <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, <laughs> these guys, they're so funny. Uh, I did not see it in <clears throat> two seconds, so we're going. All right. So what I do believe is that time can pass differently for different people. How about the um, excitement. fear effect? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was going with the fear effect. You said excitement. Same thing. They drop people from uh, – like crane over like a net or something and ask them to record what they see their on their own perception of time or to actually look at a clock. Yeah, and it changes. Yeah, well, they actually physically had to read it. And their readings were different standing than when they were being dropped from the crane and like experiencing true fear. Hmm. Now, I don't know if that's because their eyes got wider, their breath went in, and they focused harder. You know, those things would make you probably yeah. get a lower number on the clock, you know what I mean, or whatever it was. Uh-huh. I don't know. But they say that when that kind of stuff happens, that time feels like it's standing still for you. It drags on. Each second feels like more than a second. Hmm. Was that a real thing? I mean, is that perception? Can perception change? Time's not changing, right? Yeah. Is I that what we're saying here? We've all been stuck in class and waiting for that last second to, to click off of it. It's like three it's minutes. excruciating. Come on. And if you have to poop. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, you said it. That's the most excruciating <laughs> feeling in the world. Having to poop. Yeah. Actually, you know, there's a there's a correlation between how close you get to actually peeing and how bad you actually have to pee. So it's like, man, I really got to pee. And as soon as I open that bathroom door, I have to pee twice as bad as I did right before I got there. And then as I'm undoing my belt, I have to pee four times as bad as I did at the door. Mm. And then as I'm pulling out, like pee is about to come out. Like I'm trying to just make sure I clear the pants and don't pee all over the thing. It's like 30 times worse than <laughs> yeah. how I felt I, about I, three minutes like ago. the diarrhea oh effect. My God. Oh, if my God. If this, the moment you like begin to squat, it's like you have no control. <laughs> it's you starting are, to you go. You have now it's, lost it's control. <laughs> gone. Even though you had control over the previous five minutes, now you're right. in that spot. There's no way. It's over. There's it's no over. chance. Can't put the toothpaste back in your butthole. <laughs> yeah. Unless um, no, never mind. <laughs> it's, a, it's a miniature shovel. Yeah. Um, Called a syringe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so time. Time travel. This is the topic today. I would like to go um, back in time and retract that statement. So please. I guess the whole point is that, from a scientist's perspective, if things can't, don't follow time, then you can't measure things. Evenly, like if a accurately, point, everything's yeah. out of balance. Apples to apples doesn't tie in anymore. Now we're talking about two totally different things. We can't correlate them. We can't connect them. Yeah, it breaks Times our logic. Mo- time, literally, I, I read it in the Wikipedia definition, and it makes sense. But it's it literally ties the physical world to a a timeline. <laughs> I don't know how to use. I don't know how to talk about time without saying the word time <laughs> yeah. somewhere in there. Do you know what I mean? A continually like, moving. Uh... <laughs> The 3D space we live in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Hmm. Past, present, futurism. Futurism. So, uh, mm-hmm. let's talk for, about for human beings. Kind of. Past and present, future. Uh-huh. Uh, past and future are actually like formed in the ages of like three to seven, where a child doesn't understand time really? at all in the beginning. Uh, I don't know any studies that support this. They just said it. They they start. <laughs> They, that's when they Wall Street did. Journal 2015 ish yeah. reported on a report on it. But I guess like your 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 wants and your needs as a child are like you're trying to predict the future, right? You're trying to get what you want. Is the whole right. goal of intelligence is that you're predicting things out in the future so that you can make them. You also yourself. are remembering things that hurt, hurt you, you or the past. Good. Right. Right. So does do and both those them. things form at the same time that you can remember things that hurt you in the past to avoid them in the future? Do they have to exist? together i don't yeah maybe because i was going to say no you have to recognize your parents first which is a past thing right because that happens after a few days maybe maybe a week two weeks. i don't know do you they start recognize them from the past or do you recognize them because you understand what they look like now or should look like now but that means you had a past of them right i mean you can't just you have say, a memory which is current but memory is the past by definition Wait. But you're not envisioning them in the past. Your no, no, oh, I see you're saying. At that moment, but that's current for you. You're not okay. predicting that they did something, that they were doing something. It's just a 
an ingrained understanding of who. But I mean, that is, but it is based on the past a little. It's not a physical like a catalog of what they did. I understand what you're saying, but it is. It's based on the past, literally. I mean, you remember them your whole life, Mm -hmm. and you know they're associated with good. So then you know they're associated with gives me food. And then you know they're associated with this one has the deep voice. And you're associated <laughs> this one has blue eyes and is beautiful. And this it's, one has the wonderful hair. Problem. And then you start you start tying it together and you make the past. Probably at the same speed you're making a future. Ah, uh, the blue-eyed goddess. The blue-eyed god. Here he comes. <laughs> I will cry and get his attention. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. As he's forming that this is the blue-eyed one that gives me attention, I can make the blue-eyed one that gives me attention. And you they get further and further apart so that you have this grand scheme of past and present, I guess, yeah. and future. Sorry. So this gets into, like, I guess our reward cycle in our brain. So we're trying to mm-hmm. get the best outcome. When we're little, the future. outcome is very obvious. It's we want a lollipop. Right away. When we get older, <laughs> it becomes much more difficult to tell what will be benefit us and what won't in the longer term because these arms are getting pretty wide Mm -hmm. folks and it is like branching out into multiple possibilities so Mm -hmm. you want to go into what you would maybe want to know or want to change things you would if you had the opportunity to (laughs) to time travel go there yet you don't want to go there you want to go what do you want to go you know what no i don't yet because Last sciencey thing I want to touch on is um, I was reading I think it's Stephen Hawking's book. What's it called? Uh, every, universe in a nutshell. Of everything. Yeah. yeah universe okay. in a nutshell is, it, is it a picture of a universe in a nutshell? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have that book. So the part that gets me is that um, we perceive time as moving forward because of entropy. Yeah. You got entropy going yeah, on in your house here, here. So. When we think of time as moving forward, it it moves that way because we see things. Ah, can oh, you flip to that. like it's it's in the first? I did not know he was going to bring that up. So it's in like the third first range, like the first third. Mm-hmm. What I was going to talk about is entropy. Um, okay, um, so you go to flip through it and showed everyone. Oh, do you want to see? You want to see entropy? Separate. Yeah, it's in the first third, I'm pretty sure. That's a very descriptive thing. I know. Listen. Well, I mean, I don't know how many pages. If it's 214 pages, it might be like 60. You don't have to keep talking. Fill the void. It's fine. Our passage of time is shaped by the fact that we see things as entropy increasing in every system that exists. A system is just what we're in. There's entropy in this system, entropy in the universe, entropy on our Earth, entropy everywhere. Entropy is just... This, the dissemination of things from a collected, organized pattern to not. Like, if you make a vase, I, I believe, I might be explaining this correctly. Okay. That vase will not hold together forever. Over time, it will either break, it will fall apart, it will decay. Atoms aren't made to last forever in a form that we so you're, push you're, them together into. So the chapter four is predicting the future, the the. I guess the, the quote here is how, how the loss of information in black holes may reduce our ability to predict the future. So as we, we, we enter into like a, a permanent state, which entropy will bring, we won't know enough about the world to change it. It would be impossible hmm. to change it at that point because we'd be stuck. So, that's so what you're information is breaking apart the same way that materials are breaking apart, the same way that everything is kind of descending mm-hmm. into a more chaotic mix. I would say it's like less everything chaotic, is becoming it's more stagnant. Oh, that's interesting. I always thought of it as chaos, but that's a good way to put it. it it's mixed, though, correct? Everything becomes almost an even tone. Everything's breaking down to one Evenly layer, distributed one vibration, one... Less interactions. Yeah, everything's breaking down lower at lower energy level. All of the pictures in this book are nuts. I like yeah. It's weird because I don't think Stephen Hawking picked these pictures himself. I think someone else was just like, these look like they're crazy. And then I put it in this thin book. What are you doing, idiot? Stop. No, I did not say that. <laughs> Shout out Christy Brinkley for <laughs> her tweet after he died. <laughs> oh, God. Thanks. Good job. Thanks for all the thanks for all the input. It was great. Dot 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 RIP or something. It was really vague and almost threatening. We talked about like, this already. Yeah, I know, but it's just the funniest damn thing she's ever done. Oh, God. <clears throat> okay, so moving on. 
essentially you're saying time travel won't matter at the end if we don't figure it out. If we like, no, I was just saying avoid, why we think time moves forward, but it's to skip forward, something. it won't matter. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess we're the whole thing about time travel in movies is that there's some sort of cataclysm or personal event that we're trying to avoid so that we go back in time and save those things, save the things which, that we cherish. Pretty much. That's the summary, right? I agree. Before we say it, you know, do you know why time travel is bullshit, in my opinion? Um, hmm. No, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know my opinion. <laughs> well, well, let me fill you in here. Uh, I think time travel is bullshit just because... It hasn't happened yet? No, although that is an interesting point. We, you bring up, that's probably a time travel paradox. Mm-hmm. If time travel exists... Why hasn't it affected us? And now we know time travel exists by now. Yeah. Unless it was like super secret and everyone was able to keep secrets forever, which everyone's terrible at keeping secrets. Yeah. I agree. Um, No. um, I was going more with what are the chances you could move all the atoms of your body that vibrate at different frequencies, have different purposes, are moving in different speeds kind of all to a different time, but it's all the same time. Like – to move one atom from one spot in time to another spot in time, I feel like it would be a really incredible thing. So they, Maybe one day they'll do it. This is kind of like quantum entanglement, right? So you have quantum mm-hmm. particles that will exhibit the same sort of behavior or opposite behavior, and they won't be physically connected. They could be separated by a long distance. Is that like time dozens travel? of light years? I don't think so. I think it's, there's some connection. A dimension of, yeah, there's a dimension of space we can't see. That's obviously a shorter line. Maybe it's a physical connection. Maybe it's a – because, you know, you said there's three dimensions of space and then there's a dimension of time. Yeah. I think there's a dimension we don't know that they're connected on. That would make sense to me. Yeah. It's a logical answer. I agree with you. There's something we don't so, know about it. So what are the chances that you would be able to transport all the molecules and atoms and parts of my body from right now in space-time – because space and time exist together. Yeah. So and you're going to transport them to another space time. And it happens to be the same space, but a different time. And all the atoms have to make it. And all the atoms survive. And like everything moves. Like it's like, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it's like, it's like shooting a sun and turning it into a, a box of flowers. I don't know. You're changing so many things and, and shooting across so many physical quandaries at once that i don't think it'll ever happen i know that sounds weird i don't know so, so like from a physics only, perspective I yeah don't think it'll work so like even like a, like weirdly associated with what you're saying is like your physical body is one thing to move it from one location to another would you have to also bring it with it like its energy levels like your your heartbeat your, memories, your, your electrical your, pulses your brain activity no would that just get shut down and you just like wake up in your you or is it just like not you at that point right because then you're a whole in a different time a different place you just wake up as a body with a like you said a heart and a pulse but no discernible past would you be confused would you need to be like restarted in some way would you would you be aware of what happened would you have memories of the regular present or would you have a memory of the new Mm -hmm. present Mm -hmm. interesting if we start getting into time traveler paradox i paradoxy yeah. Paradoxian. Conundrums. I love that word, conundrums. You do, I don't. Oh. Hmm. Where do you want to go? Where up. do you want to go? What would you want to know? What would you want to fix if you had the power to try and Well, let's, let's just go with, let's say we could do time travel, right? Okay. Assuming physically we could do it from physics, quantum mechanics, and energy levels, everything. Cool. Mm-hmm. You can transport a person or a thing back in time. Or, would you go forward or back is the first question. Well, here's the other one. I don't think you could go back in time. I think you could only go forward in time. So you would only be forced to keep going forward, right? So you could because never... otherwise you would change the past, past. which would change yeah, the ripple present. effect, I don't get butterfly it. effect. So if time travel were possible and they decreed that you couldn't go back in time, we wouldn't know about it. And you'd also have right. people that are just like skipping ahead to see what happened. Now, could if time dilation was real, isn't that a little bit of that? Do the clocks slow down or do they go faster? I think they slow, they down. slow down. So you perceive like a year going by, but if you were traveling at almost the speed of light, uh, there's an actual equation for it. You can type in 0.9% the speed of light. Do the time dilation equation. 
and I'd like to do an exercise. So let's say we travel for one year at 0.95% the speed of light, which is impossible, but let's just say we can do it for a year. Can you do that? I can if you buy me. Okay, I'll keep talking. I didn't know if you found it. I was making sure we weren't going up uh, an alleyway that we couldn't even talk about. So let's say we found a way to take hydrogen or something, something super abundant and super simple that's everywhere, and we could fuel our rocket ship to go at 0.9 or 0.95 percent the speed of light. So what is that? 290 some thousand meters per second, right? And we're in this ship for a year. How much time would pass for people on Earth? There's actually an equation for it. And I believe they use Einstein's relativity. So, hmm, I'm an Einstein guy. I don't think so, it. if you're traveling at 99% the speed of light, oh, 99. Time, time is slowed down to 14% of its usual value. Theoretically. What? That's why I said 95, because I figured that was more realistic. But. So you, so you could theoretically move at like a seventh the speed. So you would see you, you, at what point would your children age? They'd be – you'd take five years and then they would be your age, right, if, if you're 30. Which one? Uh, at like, what speed? I didn't hear. 99% the speed of light. Yeah. So you could essentially see how your – you could – I got to say. <laughs> see how your kids look when they're your yeah. age? Yeah, they could match. How they messed up their lives. Yeah. yeah, they could see you at your age, and you could see them at your age. Well, that would be wild. This is um, talk major... to them like they're friends on a podcast. Crazy I would not be, be friends with my son or anything. I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe I would. He would hate you because well, you would also <laughs> you would have left him for thirty years or whatever, right? Yeah. So you, unless you had some sort of magical gravitational bookcase and watch that might might cover some emotional scars <laughs> so uh what we're hitting at is a movie called interstellar starring matthew mcconaughey and a robot named hal uh, yeah but it i don't like that movie it's slow <gasps> bullshitty it's a Hans zimmer soundtrack a great soundtrack oh yeah if you could just listen to the soundtrack I, that's fine <laughs> recommend it don't watch it <laughs> for three hours um <laughs> I actually didn't think it was a terrible movie. It was all right. I liked a lot of the premise premises in it. I didn't like we we literally mentioned that we were gonna talk about this movie and I said it it had long, drawn out silent parts that were like too artsy. Like it'd be like Matthew McConaughey looking at the corn that's uh having blight on it, and then it would be like the soundtrack and it would be like looking at all the corn and then they'd show like the child hungry looking out the window and then they'd show like the moon for like five minutes and then they'd show like this all without anyone talking and you're like oh my god this is intense watching. intensely yeah, this boring is too intense for <laughs> talking about blight and corn um time travel but they time travel because he goes so fast time dilates when he comes back to earth after he did his mission or whatever the hell it is Oops, spoiler alert he doesn't come back does he he yeah, might, he might it's be like i'm not sure mode. it's like yeah, he, but he, he can speak uh, through quantum and gravity bullshit gravity yeah right. so they do have right. gravitational measurements on earth they have sensors that are like set up like a v so they watch the ripple as it goes through like one end of the v and like comes out the other and they have mm -hmm. measured gravitational pulses so the gravitational pulses are faster than of you what it's like when a uh a, a a star explodes. There's a supernova that like changes the dynamics of the physics, and like the density of those things causes like waves of gravity. The gravitational like, wave. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's possible that you can send messages like faster than we could possi possibly believe, and have them interconnected. Inter. So a gravity wave travels at the speed of light, correct? Because information you can only travel Sounds at that speed. Sure, I'll take it. Okay, I forgot what I was. Theoretical going physics. That, I, I don't know. know. I just confused you. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah, you did. Anyway, moving on. That movie had time dilation. He comes back and his daughter is his grandmother, right? She's like 88 on her deathbed. Yeah. And he's still Matthew McConaughey. Hey, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right. I stay the same age. <laughs> you keep getting older, I stay the same, same age. age. You got zero chance. <laughs> By the way, no one ever makes that joke. I'm the only one who's noticed this. Oh, really? In every no, one of his movies? No, 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 the zero 
He says zero, zero very funny. But he says zero. it in every movie. At one point, he says, you got zero chance. You listen to him, you could end up in a gutter. You have a zero chance. Like, it's just like... <laughs> Make sure he says zero. That would be amazing yeah, to have a contract, contract that just said, I have to say zero Matthew in this movie. Has to say zero at least three times. Or else we out. double his salary. He's out. He's out, God damn it. Anyway. So let's talk about other movies. Unless you got mm-hmm. you have a point on this, Charlie. So, <laughs> uh, let me see. Predestination. It's a movie where the person is like a special assassin that goes through time to kill people. And eventually, like the person who incites that change is the same person in the end. Sorry, that was a spoiler. And uh, like his, it's his own job to kill himself. It's the same thing with the uh, spoiler. Uh, Looper. Looper does the same thing with yeah, the older person. That is right. And at the end of that movie, I think he's trying to save the kid with like mental powers, special powers. So the only way to do that is to kill himself. Which oh kills yeah, I forgot self. about that. Yeah. Interesting. So let's talk about all these those movies. Two. All these movies have a there's a, a thing that all time travel movies like that have overlapping the same people at mm-hmm. the same time. Right, because from a writer's perspective, it's the only way to make it a neat, clean – it's not just easy. It's it's the only way to make sense. If you don't end it, you have open ends on both ends, in which case you can't close a story with two open ends. Yeah. You could close one. You can't close both. They're going in different directions at different timelines. Can't the only it. way to make it go as one story is to somehow circle back – or you married your mother, or Michael J. Fox had sex with his mother, or whoever. Yeah, yeah. So the right? yeah, exactly. Back to the Future, which is mm. you're trying to which go is, back. By the way, a a super well done movie. Yeah. And B people still don't get enough credit for how great of a name that is. Back to the Future. Like that's that's, that's I that's I'm just sweet. sitting here. That's really good. It's really good. Whoever thought that up still patting themselves on the back. You know what? I'm Panders. Pat you on the back too. They also cover up their anachronisms in it because they like anachronisms. Anachronisms. Oh. I'm sorry, I do both ways. They like run over a tree and then they make sure that in the future that tree is not there. That like twin pines becomes hmm. lone pine. So it's like little details like that cover up. Like did they? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It covers up the, hmm. uh, I guess, the errors that he made in the past. But those are small deviations. If you've ever seen uh, Adjustment Bureau, it's like there's – so we're getting into like the religious aspect of like fate and destiny here. So Adjustment Bureau is like there's a, a divine entity yes. that is predicting what is happening and they're controlling and keeping things. everyone kind of in check, yeah. making sure things happen a certain way. Mm-hmm. Who is in that? Is that Matt Damon? Matt Damon. I haven't Damon seen that and, in literally 10 to 15 years, probably when it came out, when I saw it on Emily a whim and Blunt, don't remember I it. You could be absolutely correct. I think she's fantastic. Yes, you do. Mm. Yeah, got a crush. Oh. She's gorgeous, and uh, hmm. so it's like it's like not only so like fate and destiny has this idea that like you're destined to do I guess maybe a set number of things. You like it's defined that it has to happen. There are people that believe like it doesn't matter that your your fate regardless is going to be like a a linear path and you're going to match it exactly. The adjustment bureau takes it and says that like at this point you're going to meet this person who's going to change your future and it's like a necessary part of your, of your life because it develops what you do next and helps mm-hmm. shape the next thing you do, which helps shape future people, which is for the greater good, let's say. Yeah. And the whole purpose of the adjustment bureau is that they had this grand scheme and then it's a rom-com. So love broke that scheme. Trump's all Trump's all <laughs> Trump. <it. He laughs> I just don't know why it. I said that he trumped it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So it's kind of an interesting thing. That further? The possibilities yeah. of going back in time. So like if you could go back in time in your own life, was is there anything that you would change? No. I'm too You're too happy with what you, you've got? Not at all. You I wouldn't want a mansion, uh, lots of money. No, free no, time, that's not it. That's not it at all. Power, sexier woman. Uh, no, no, no. I love all these things. I think this <laughs> is amazing. I would love all of those things. I would be afraid that the way time is built, the way human 
perception of time is built, the way people interact because mm -hmm. of time, because of certain reactions, the way reactions happen because of reactions. Yeah. That even if you went back to change something, you'd, you'd have to have a link to the past. Something else. God yeah. damn it, I knew you were doing this shirt thing. <laughs> He's only got six shirts, folks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's six. I'm not going to wear that for a while. <laughs> it's, a, it's out of rotation. You're putting it down in your notes. Yeah. yeah. Noted. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Wear, I like this shirt too. So it's a nice shirt. shirt. I, have no, I have no problem with the shirt. Thank you. But. But if you change the past to make yourself rich in the future, you have changed several other things. You made somebody poor. Has to be. Not just that. I put it this way. So let's say in a football game, this is our favorite argument. If he just converts that first down in this first in the second half and they score there, they win the game. Well, no, not necessarily, because now the score is different. So it dictates what the coach says in halftime differently. It dictates how certain players play. That dictation could change whether someone has to run an out pattern or is covering too high safety because now you're from behind whether you're in the lead. Did he turn his ankle on one play? Well, that changes things even further. Now that safety left the game. Oh, my God. Now the safety left the game. We have the lead. We're playing entirely different. You just changed the entire game, and I'm just talking about by the third quarter. We didn't even get to the fourth quarter yet. So – in changing the past, you've changed so many things because you didn't change one thing. You changed all the ripples that will happen around it. So this is the uh, – if you go back in time, would you kill Hitler? Not at all. <laughs> you – you <laughs> semi – He was a cute baby. semi – Yeah. No, 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 no. no. I'm just not an anti-Hitlite. So, okay? yeah, I think so. The thing is that, I mean – you don't know the necessi necessity of evil. Like if, if someone was evil and you could save uh, like a utilitarian view, you could save a whole bunch of people relative to More what people. you thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know that like that's necessary for the birth of something better. So like we're all aware that this asshole did something awful and we all Hitler's say – a hey, household name. Yeah. Don't do – what Hitler did because he – It's a warning terrible. sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the worst person. He's yeah. literally a, a poster child for bad. If he was dead, we wouldn't have that, correct? Yeah. you Wolfenstein would not exist. <laughs> <laughs> the first 3D first person shooter. Yeah. Octoliba. So if you don't – if you go back in, in time and kill Hitler, you might actually cause another dictator to rise up and be able to take control. Imagine – if that happened 10 years later and they had atomic power. More weapons. Ah, you bring up a good point. Yeah. They could do a whole lot more damage and you wouldn't have had this one signifier to control the world and protect the world. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now we have no way of knowing this. That's true. I mean, that's what happens if you go back in time is that all the ripples that you create start to change things that you can't possibly guess. So is this this is what happens in most time travel movies? I think yeah. there's like three three genres. One where you're sent back to do a bunch of deeds, and then the last deed is yourself, like the looper. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. The other one we're touching on is the you go back to make things better for everyone, but in doing that, you've created something problematic yeah. that it's comes the back photo at you in the future. In back to the future, where he he starts to see people disappear from his family because he uh -huh. destroyed his family line. Right. So it's kind of a strange thing that could you – I guess would you still exist? Like so that's one fallacy in Back to the Future that he, would, go. he would disappear immediately, right? Right, because he stopped existing. It's not like a slow fade. That's just like movie like being tongue-in-cheek like, oh, he's got 30, 30 minutes Fading. before he slowly it's fades. Right, right. He can't right. play the guitar anymore. Oh, no. They have to oh, kiss no. at the Under the Sea Ball. Oh, uh, jeez. <laughs> So what you said too is where they are – they correct everything. They have ripples and then there was a third one are you going to talk about? Uh, I didn't know. I feel like there is another one that I'm forgetting at the moment but yeah. Like I guess like Terminator falls into that. 12 Monkeys also falls into that. Mm -hmm. Maybe Twelve Doctor Strange one. where he goes he, – he goes to Dramamu who's like trying to eat the world and he says, Dramamu and he gets killed. Dramamu gets killed. It's like he uses time oh, as an yeah. endless loop. It's like if you can control time, you can control exactly what happens and it can like – you can 
force your will onto other people. What's the movie? Oh, Tom Cruise. Um, hmm. In the future, he's a starship fighter. Mish- I was going to say no, uh, Minor- Minority dying. Report. That's a prediction. No, and he keeps coming back to life. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That's that where was actually decent. It also has Emily yeah. Blunt in it. Full Metal Bitch. Yes, it does. I knew. Yeah. Yes, Edge of does. Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Wow. Did you look it up? No. That was pretty good. I like that, that movie nice. quite a bit. So that's also Groundhog Day. I only Day. saw it once, but right. uh, it is a little bit. Re- Groundhog Day so touches on this perfectly. Ironically, that's the third kind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You keep repeating something in time until you get it right, yeah. which is almost like a fairy tale version, like a very like if you keep were going, playing. you got it wrong. Keep going, you died. Keep going, it was bad. Ah, you got it right. We can move forward in yeah. time. And in Edge of Tomorrow, it was figuring out how to kill the aliens. In yeah. Groundhog Day, it was figuring out how to be the best person possible. Right? Saving lives, kissing babies, learning yeah. to play piano. What that was the most interesting part. He kept his skills that he learned every day. I think yeah, that was he cool. didn't refresh. He didn't lose them every day. That's um right. Which so there's an Epicurean view of life, which is that if you can live life to the fullest and enjoy it the most yourself, that is the best way to live life. So Epicureans would try to strive for like the most enjoyment possible, <laughs> which I that's a new word for me. Epicurean keyword. You pronounce you pronounced it correct. Yeah, I believe Corruptly. so. So, I right. if mm-hmm. I guess if like one view is if you can go back in time that you could change things to make them the happiest for you. I don't know that that necessarily makes it happier for everyone else. For everyone else, right? Which is troubling. Is you like eventually? I think you would understand because you have all the time in the world that you want to make the world a better place overall, but you have no perception of how good the world is. You just have your view. So you get limited. I agree. Like, like 12 monkeys, 12 monkeys does this too. I think you'd like 12 monkeys. So I think maybe you're thinking about it. You're chugging through it. I do like it, but I, I've seen it like 12 times total. I've laid enough. Mm -hmm. Two times in its entirety. Ten times in either the second half or the first five minutes or the first four yeah, minutes it's, or it, the last 30 minutes. I hardly ever see it straight through. And so there's a continuity error for me when I think of it. I'm like, there's Bruce always a- Willis thinks he's sent to the wrong time, but he's really in the right time. And he's seeing himself. Why does he blame the 12 monkeys, though? I think someone died. Because remember it's Brad Pitt him. and the gang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... There's the somebody that falls out, the, is... out of a window and like crashes on the ground. I think, or I don't. I don't remember exactly. This is, I have the same feeling about that movie as you. I've seen it multiple Which I times, love it, but... but I never feel like I've seen it correctly. It, like I can't put right. it back together. It's almost like Memento, where you, the pieces are so strewn out that you feel like you've only seen is that it? a quarter. Is that a time movie. travel movie? I think it is. He experiences it linearly, though, doesn't he? But in backwards increments, like you experience this strip and then this strip and then this strip and then this strip. So they move in a forward direction, but every time you're finished a clip, it goes back a scene. And then you finish that clip and it goes back a scene. And you finish that clip and it goes back a scene. So would you like, this just scares me to death. Like if I had time travel at my fingertips, I would confuse the fuck out of myself. Like I wouldn't know Good what point. was going on. How would on. you keep it straight? Not to mention, like your own brain would be confused. They would. It would be like looking at yourself like a year ago yo, and then skipping check back. This and out. Like, so we get seasonal affective disorder (SAD) mm-hmm. when it's winter for a long time. What if we skipped around? Would we get new disorders, new weird things to happen to our brain that you were kind of just touching on? If you could, like, if the, like, yeah, if you skipped summer to winter, summer to winter, summer to winter, or like even like climate, <coughs> like oxygen levels. Yes. Yeah. Like you're in the Jurassic period looking at the dinosaurs. Yeah. It's like this is – you might be like hyped different up. Different oxygen, then, different everything. Different microbes going around, different. Mm-hmm. Everything's different. You're not built for it. You haven't been raised in it. You literally were plucked into a pretty extreme environment. Yeah. Another thing to consider um, – What else you got? Damn, I had it. it was right there. What did we talk about just one sentence ago? War of the Worlds essentially is that you no. – like you're not used to your own environment. Oxygen levels, 
bacteria, germs, no, it was viruses. One sentence before that, if you could at your fingertips. <laughs> Times at your fingertips, you could dial in where you wanted to go. Would you have a reference point? Would you lose your reference point? Do you have to go in the same space you're in? So, like, if this space was not a house before that, would I die immediately? Yeah, so I think about that all the time. It's like you'd have to have, yeah. like, Terminator, like, bubble of liquid whatever fire the ground to level destroy. Could be different? Yeah. Like, what? Is That's it, weird. You could, you could time travel into a bubble underneath the Earth, and you'd be like, well, <laughs> got to keep I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Have a great day. I hope I don't die. You'd have to travel in space as well, and then you'd have to be able to like yeah. see and view the future and past at, before you can even go there. Yeah. Space and time are connected. That's the other thing. Space and time are connected. You're changing. What happens if you see yourself in most of these movies? You're not allowed to, right? That's the rule. So in Twelve Monkeys, I think he I think he sees himself, but he doesn't know. He's like thirty years older, so he doesn't yeah. know it. It's like a passing. Thing. Would you um, know yourself if you? So say you made a terrible I'm mistake passing. and you went back in time to your thirteen-year-old self, and you said, "Don't do that." Would you even be like, "This guy's nuts"? You wouldn't know that it's you. Remember it. Yeah. Would it make an impression on you to change your life? Could you change your younger? self's oh. life by going back and telling so. him something dude i could have went back to 13 year old me next week if i could time travel and let's say i went back to, this is the other weird thing you get into weird timelines yeah. no, no no 30 33 and a half year old me went back to 14 year old me and said whatever you do check this box on the form trust me it's gonna help you out in the long run pal i wouldn't know a WTF, I'm not checking whatever box some crazy dude told me. I probably wouldn't recognize myself. Even if I did, I probably wouldn't check the box I told me to do because I feel like it's pushing me too hard in a direction and I don't – there was no other sign of proof. You know when something magical happens and you think about it for a while and then you're like, give me another sign and nothing happens and you start to think maybe I made it up. Yeah, you don't – you'd have to prove yourself. Like uh, I think – Yeah, and there's, there's no – Future proof up to checking the box or changing whatever in like life. lottery numbers or something. Well, I would. That's a foolproof one because it costs you what two bucks to play it. I would play it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Plus, if you because what are you going to lose at that point? Well, how does the Back to the Future Biff has the almanac mm. and he starts reading off the sports almanac? Game. Right, right, I think right, they right. like he's like it's like a hail mary play or something. Someone yeah. says, "Oh, he's, that's never going to happen," and then it happens, and then like he like. Starts predicting things. That are so gonna... there's a new one coming out called. It's about a camera that can see the future. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Shutterfly. Um, exposure. It's it's a camera word. Um, deep view. Uh, it's is this a horror movie? Yeah, it's a horror movie. So, old scientist who lives across the street from this this group of friends see something i'm taking bad. pictures of the room every day and he posted them on the wall but it wasn't a regular camera it could see the future what's it called you have a name i've seen anyway, this movie he's taking Damn. pictures right and it's of the the four friends or whatever in there so the friends came over to the house one day through whatever stupid trope they made time up. lapse yes time lapse okay cool Time lapse photo. I feel like this is like a. So get this. With a C? He starts. No, I don't know. I actually can't remember. I uh, was taking a crap watching the previous film. (laughs) Actually, I wasn't really paying attention. I was thinking of radio. Radio has like. He can hear his past self. Oh. I didn't know that. Anyway, in time lapse, they realize this camera shows them the next day. So they start looking at the TV in the background. They start playing the odds. They realize they watch sports a lot. They start watching sports on purpose so they can see the score the next day. They start playing. The bookie shows up in their house, and there's a picture of it the day before the bookie shows up in the house. He's like, there's nothing worse than someone who won't pay their bets. And he says, except someone who's right 100% of the time. And it's like creepy because now he's getting mad. Like he, they're 100% betters. People are out to kill them. And then all of a sudden, how are you getting these right? Blah, 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 blah. He has to tell them about the camera. They're hiding things. Other people are getting in trouble for predicting the future in ways they shouldn't be able to. And they can't explain why they know the things they do. 
and it's just it ruins their lives essentially and they're talking about destroying the machine and it looked pretty interesting it's just an interesting take it's very we shouldn't be changing times so top build mm-hmm. danielle panabaker shout oh, out to danielle panabaker <laughs> shout out she's listening she's hit us up in the dms you know what I'm saying? yeah she's got that uh nerdy suave type thing going on uh coquette, heard you like coquettish that. ingenue <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway i got distracted by her okay time lapse What'd you say? <laughs> anyway. What was the anyway, what I'm getting at is it's a common trope that time travel ends up being bad and the people who can do it or have a machine to do it eventually correct the wrongs and destroy the machine or stop doing it, right? Yeah, they feel that's awful. So that's like the movie perception of time travel. If you really had like someone who could lock down time travel and be the only one, maybe they could surgically change things to make them for what they are. So maybe we're on the same path that is what it's supposed to be based on those adjustment bureau people or like a secret government agency trying to correct wrongs. Also, alternative universes. Like if you change something in an okay. alternative universe, maybe all the universes that sounded terrible. Maybe all the al- alternative like universes are, are existing all at the same time. Like every possibility okay. happens and then every possibility spawns an, mm-hmm. a, an infinite number of universes. So if you were to go back in time and change something, you would be stuck in whatever universe you created. Mm-hmm. Well, do you still have the ability to time travel? You do, but how do you undo what you've already done? Well, this is the interesting question. You stop yourself Um, doing what you've done, and then does that create an alternate universe? There are movies that do that. I've seen really convoluted movies. They have to go back in time to stop themselves from going back in time, to Mm -hmm. stop themselves from changing something. And it's like, whoa. And it's like, what are you doing here? I'm you three. I'm from the 2049 March. And he's like, oh, I'm from February. And it's like, I have to kill you. And he's like, do you have to kill me? Or what's what's going to happen? He's like, I have to. And then he kills him. <laughs> and it's like, he had to do it. And you're like, okay. What movie fine. is this? This sounds like a good we movie. Stopped him. Uh, I think it's in Rick and Morty, Family Guy. Oh, like the cartoons okay. have done. I have to kill you. Because they take it to the nth degree. Yeah. The nth degree. The nth. Um. Um. Um, I couldn't say Trump. I said Trump, but now I'm saying the Trump degree. (laughs) Anyway, anyway, there is a thing where I don't think. Well, let's say you created this alternate reality and you're stuck in it. Time travel doesn't preclude space travel. Is an alternate universe in the same space as ours? Could you travel? I mean, if you could freeze time, and I guess you could choose where you go. You could travel to anywhere okay. in the universe. But that's not space travel, is it? That's space travel we're talking about. That's teleportation. Isn't it a different thing? If you could freeze time, then you could go mm-hmm. anywhere. I don't know. Time's its own thing. Why are you combining the two? You're saying we can space travel because you can time travel. Because one's harder than the other? I don't know. We'll find you know out in the future if we'll live that long. No, we won't. It's no, not it's happening. Not happen. It's not real. <laughs> the other thing is this. The greatest quandary of them all. If you went back in time and changed time, you would change time to the effect where, A, you might not be born, or B, time travel might not be invented. And then your machine breaks and you're stuck in that time? Forget stuck in time. You didn't exist to go back in time. Right? I'm talking about if you just broke the machine. If you just, like, made it so time travel doesn't happen. What if you... What if you went back in time and killed a bunch of people and then your parents never met and never had you and you invented the time machine? There would be no time machine. Hmm. So where are you at this point with no time machine being invented? You're trying to save Doc from the <laughs> librarians. Lydians. <laughs> librarians. I go 80 librarians. Those librarians are there. <laughs> Libyans. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, lots of labias, those folks. Mm. <laughs> lastly, I want to go back to destiny that you said. Yeah. You did, did you? If Yes, I did. Um, 
let's say there is no time travel. How does time travel affect destiny? I think, and I thought of this before the episode and I've been drinking, but I feel like if time travel existed, there would be no destiny because you could change it. We'd have to go back to the island. Hmm. Which one? The island from Lost. Oh, see, I, I saw the first four. <laughs> seasons, oh, you I didn't watch it. it. Yes, I did. I don't. I don't remember any any of the characters. Hurley. Hurley. Yeah. And the bald guy, John Locke. Jack. And Jack. And who's the long Sawyer. hair? Uh, Sawyer. 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 He was That's sexy in only one show. Yeah, he was. Locke. That's all right. John Locke. Said. Hmm. So. I don't know how we sum that up. What were you going on? Sorry, I distracted you. That's fine. Um, destiny. So we're set to fulfill a certain purpose. That we change it people's lives in different nodes of different sure, periods we do of our good life. Deeds, or we meet a person and we fall in love and have children. Mm. Isn't that the like the pinnacle of movie fantasy? Is that your 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 life is changed by the in the moment you meet somebody that like it's just splinters it's also, off and a isn't it, firework. Isn't it the opposite of free will? Is that it was meant to happen and you had no choice in the matter, so you felt the same you way you're going. How about feel? that time travel movie where you go back and change things, but they end up happening anyway? Hmm. Did you ever see a movie where someone knows the future and they said, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, and they do 40 things differently to try and avoid said situation, but they go so far overboard that at the last minute they do something that causes it to happen, like the Oracle with Morpheus? Mm. Don't worry about the cup. What cup? I'm not going to knock over a cup. And in doing so, she causes him to turn and knock over a cup or whatever it is. It's not a cup. I just It's a vase. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Peter Dan. Yes. The weird part about that is that it is a simulation. So they're watching them exist in a perpetual... A simulation. Yeah, this is the same time. Hmm. Is that... Yeah, I don't, want, I don't know if I want to go there. All right. I know we can wrap it up pretty nicely. Yeah. Let's say people couldn't time travel. Okay. Soul Every spirits. now and then... Um, no, I wasn't even going there. Information. If you could send back Every now and the then, I leave my friend Dill Dan a voicemail, and I say it's from the future. You know, <laughs> you tell him. Uh, I I tell him all sorts of Don't stuff. Don't do it. Sometimes I'm like, it's Nick. It's from the future. You'll never <laughs> guess what. The only thing you can't do is, oh my god, hang up. Like that's, sometimes that's a voicemail I leave, and that's. Very funny to me. Sometimes I hear that he's like, the worst is when he says, um, I listened to it on like speakerphone in the car because I didn't know it was you. And then it was one time it was about uh, his girlfriend or something. And she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, she's like, just ignore him. He's a dick. Anyway, and in a way, aren't I time traveling anytime I leave a voicemail? I know it sounds real stupid. I'm sending a message to someone who won't read it or hear it for hours, days, weeks, right? So this this happens in Back to the Future where he just sees something happen. It's like at a denouement moment where like everything is kind of yeah. unraveling. And I think it's at the end of the movie and somebody appears with a package and says, someone told me to be here at this time 30 years ago. This is for you. And then he holds – it gives him the letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a letter. Okay. It's a, le- it's a letter. And then he opens it and it's like, Da-da! and it skips to the next movie, I think. I don't remember it, but, mm-hmm. but in a way you are like, why don't we use that more often? Like if it would be even just comical, like to write yourself a letter and then say like post office, don't deliver this until like a year later. We don't do it because we maybe disregard the, we disregard everything. Right. The past. Well, there's the also we, our, our, our weight on the present is way overvalued because uh-huh. where's pleasure exist? So this is in like my – so there's a theory here that like you're building yourself up over the course of your life to be something. And I, I firmly believe that like the entrepreneurs out there that are building stuff are just trying things and they keep just trying things. So like there's no grand vision. 
like the end product isn't what they thought in the beginning. It's just like a small number of building blocks that actually build up to like an, an Amazon or like a Google. Like these things are like small ideas that then just explode into bigger ideas. But well, they your take life a lot changes, of time. technology changes, the world changes. So the things you're building could line up perfectly. They also could be null and void in one single fell swoop. Yeah, one right? failure could destroy your hopes yeah. and dreams. Everything. But if you have the extra time and the extra money, it's worth investing in something that may or may not pan out, I guess. Yeah. If you could, if you have a will to be a certain direction, maybe it's going to happen anyway. Let's talk about uh, mm -hmm. stoicism. This is kind of the same idea. I saw that in your notes, but yeah. I didn't know. So I guess stoicism is is the belief that you're going to, I'm going to butcher this so bad. Mm -hmm. It's that you're on a path and your path does not deviate. It's going to happen anyway. So you're willing to accept things as they come to you. So you're not trying to predict things in the future. It's just your willingness to accept when they happen to do the best when they happen to you. Does that follow? I do, but uh, what does it apply to? Like, who is there a character that is behind Stoicism? Is there a movie that we can touch on? Is there anything? I'm trying to think of who you're talking about. Odysseus or someone? I would. I think this was a speech in one of our like Odysseus classes. One of like the Greek That's tragedies. The weirdest like, thing ever that I picked Odysseus because no, I don't recall the speech, but I totally he was the only thing I could think of because he's constantly getting like bad news. Like, hey, the god of plagues is here, and he's here's here for you. He's like, I shall deal with it. Or like, your wife's dead. Um, here, so and so. And he's like, I shall deal with it. And like, he deals with everything as it comes to him, and he's very creative. Or what's the word? Um, Oh, creative. like nonchalant about he's it. He's adaptable. No, it's like it's not adaptable. It's not creative. He's accepting, Frank, willing. No, but he uses things. To... Adaptable. Oh, it's it's another word for adaptable. Anyway, it also Someone allows you. Can... Mm -hmm. It frees up your mind in order to like accurately Blue assess things. the situation and then deal with mm. it. Like the people who have like anxiety are constantly thinking about the future perils, which they can't avoid. So like if you're a stoic, future perils don't matter to you because you don't believe that you can control those things in the moment because they're not the moment. It's weird. I'm pretty stoic. I'm I'm uh, somewhere in the middle. I get anxiety, yeah, but I also yeah, you do have some realize that there are moments that can steer the future, and in those moments, I'm stoic because I don't care about the things that happened after those moments. It's like um, I'm going to use a quote here from uh, someone who was talking about sex is that if in the moment of sex, you're focused entirely on that moment. And for a guy, it happens not, I guess not when he wants it to, it just happens when the female decides and the female is looking for like all the good things that happen and build up to sex. So she said that foreplay occurs not 10 minutes before sex, but immediately after the, the orgasm. So, so like immediately after your last orgasm, you're already building towards the future. So like as a guy, the view of the world is very narrow in the expectation. So like mm -hmm. there's a little bit of stoicism totally. there that you're kind of stuck in this like 10 minute window. Like, oh, we might have sex in the ten, next 10 minutes. I care a lot about this. But for a 14 woman. 14 minute window. Yeah, 14. Someone in refractory. Um, so some people like she was saying, like women are like building up this slow like sandcastle of emotion and like the moment you have an orgasm, you're trying to shovel on more Rebuild foreplay. It. You're trying to get her into it more. So it's weird because I think that happens for the guy too, technically because time's passing. He's yeah. approaching. I mean, after the orgasms, he's approaching his next orgasm. Yeah. There's a connection science there. Toss. But he isn't aware of it. He's not thinking about it. He's not really worried about it. He's not, he knows he'll get there. <laughs> yeah. He can, you can do it, but it's interesting. So it's it's more important to her. I guess it depends on the individual a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But I see what you're saying. Like there's there's small and large timelines. There's there's the stoicism a... makes us think that you could be stuck in a time window that's like this. See that? Thank you, folks. Uh -huh. Check it out. Yeah. Your timeline could also be as big as your lifespan. You might be thinking of birth from death and be constantly aware of all of it. 
there's no way for me to know for sure. There's no way to know how much of it you should accept as the present. Like, does someone who's 80 years old think of their life from three to now and think this is my life? I mean, most of us think of our lives in windows, three years, six months, four weeks. I think that makes us different people too, the way we think of our lives. I guess in the other version, if you could relive a portion of your life, so like I college. think from well yeah college is the obvious one I think I'd want to relive college over and over oh, again. Okay. okay but I think I would like to pick a different college each time if you could go to a different college every time that would be but wouldn't like, it change your life I mean if you could reset like if you groundhog oh, day reset like it every time years, and then go back to regular yeah go back to being yeah, 17, 18, and deciding uh, I'm going at twenty now twenty one I can go to the bars but you, you'd like have to junior. Yeah. You'd have to set it yeah, to be okay. like, okay, I'm going to be here, space and time control. Mm-hmm. But you're thinking about like mostly sexual how do you fill out the ex- Yeah, but how do you fill out the, the like blanks? The paperwork to go to a different college? No, 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 no. The paperwork to go to the college you'd and then the so admissions. Of it. I did do to get alone. in. Like it's a lot of work. Do you do like through Sally May? Like is there um, <laughs> so many timelines where you don't get in? The fat? You're just sitting there at your parents' home. You're just like, wow, well, I didn't predict the, this for four the, years. <laughs> you had to work at Walmart. The fast for, <laughs> for four years. And you're like, uh, oh. University of Florida was not great. I was yeah. in Walmart at home. <laughs> That's a good point. What I want to do to bring it back to center is that I mentioned how sending a voicemail is a little bit like time travel. Uh-huh. Um, anytime you record a video, it's a little bit like time travel. Yeah. Only in the forward direction. But let's say you made a podcast. That's a little bit like time travel. Yeah. Do you think people who make a podcast fairly intellectual, fairly discussional, fairly everything about themselves and then record it and upload it to the internet, maybe they want to look back on it in 20 years. Maybe someone else will. Maybe in 40 years someone else will see it. Maybe in 100 years someone will stumble upon it. Yeah. It's weird because that's – Time travel. Information. Uh, from our door. Travel. Look, this doorknob. If someone's looking at this in 100 years, they're going to say, that's the most fucked up doorknob I've ever seen. <laughs> For they fun. might look at this and be like, that's how e-drums looked? Like, I know, there's no way I can know what e-drums look like in 100 years. Like, that's wallpaper? This is how people's doors are? This is before the big holocaust? And I'll be like, huh? Yeah, sure. That's there's no we way played we played sports. Would know. <laughs> I can't believe we played sports back then. Sports. <laughs> it's a soccer ball and a football helmet. Uh, it's so People good. used to use wallpaper back then too. Holy shit. I mean, look, dude, you got plants back there. Yeah. Maybe in the future they don't have plants. They're like, this is – they're trying to sniff our video. They're like, oh, oh my god, that's back sniff. when they had plants. <laughs> didn't they have 3D technology? No, we didn't. So – that's one of the things I would like to – like if there's viewers out there that are sitting on a beach or they're like having a hard time and we like change their future, that's kind of a bizarre thing to think about is that – We did time travel, dude. Yeah. We changed the future just by recording this, Which by putting it out there. crazy. That's what we're doing, time travel sort of. It's the closest we can get right now, right? Yeah. That's what we're doing, I guess. Did you want to touch on, lastly, the uh, out-of-place pictures oh, through history? anachronisms? I don't know if you have yeah. specifics. I always uh, – every now and then I come across a YouTube video. It's like 10 pictures that prove time travelers are real. And it's like someone in like a, a leather jacket and shades and everything at like a, a concert in the 1960s. And I'm like, he probably looked like a big asshole. It's people who look – out of place or things that look out of place and out of time. Like how did someone have he drums in a video in the background in 1940? <laughs> it's like, it's like he probably didn't. I don't know what the hell you were saying. They're most prevalent in movies. So like, it's hard to find things that are, I don't know that there are actual anachronisms. Oh, there are. If you, if you look hard enough on YouTube, there are like pictures of, um, political parades where someone will be dressed a hundred percent like they're from like the two thousands and they have something that looks like it might be a cell phone in their hand. And you're like, that's pretty wild, but 
I'm sure it's a coincidence that they dressed like an a-hole that day and that they were reaching for their ear. You know what I mean? There's no way it's an actual cell phone in 1980 and it's a, they're wearing a, a Perry Ellis, whatever. Yeah, you'll know I'm from the 90s. I said Perry Ellis. That's probably not even a thing anymore. Did you see any of these? He's still ah, look, he's still he's there the are no, so they're all like uh, broken, they're like bullshit. Renaissance fair. They pull out a camera to yeah, there's it's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if this really did exist and you went back in time, someone would be out there already monitoring it and they'd be like, this person has to die now. Shut it down. Yeah. So, so to sum it up. Yeah. We talked about uh, fate, destiny, time travel, stoicism. The past paradox. and the future. We talked about having sex with your grandfather. Is that the paradox? Alternative universities. Great grandfather. Butterfly effect. I. The Endless butterfly loops. effect. He goes back in time and chokes himself with the umbilical cord. How do you like that, folks? That's a beautiful <laughs> movie. Spoiler alert. Oh, oh sorry. I ruined the butterfly effect for someone. Yeah. We talked about Looper. Predestination. Oh, my God. Destiny. Pre-pude- prepudescent boys. Oh, my God. They're always fiddling with time. <laughs> it is, uh, hey, uh, move on. Yep. Oh Killing Hitler. We talked about Badari Jewelers. We're sponsored by Badari Jewelers. If you're gonna buy a diamond ring, go to Badari Jewelers. Relativity. 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 Time dilation. Buy jewelry for your relatives. We talked about entropy. We talked about the heat death of the universe. Conundrums. We talked about paradoxes. Conundrums. Paradoxy. Paradox. Paradox. I. We talked about a lot, folks, and I'm glad everyone tuned in. I hope no one tuned out with our parsecs and yeah, cesium ninety eight and all one thirty three. If this Nine video billion. is reaching people in the year twenty forty nine or some crap, three thirty. Wait, let's oh, let's do a prediction to finish up. Let's do a prediction for twenty twenty eight, uh, April third. Ready? Oh yeah. It's rainy. It's raining today. April 3rd, 2028. Okay. Yeah. The president says something really dumb. I know it's not our president. It's a different president. I understand that. Did you say April 2023? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And April we have 3rd. How many, how many followers on Twitter? I oh, say like, like 400. One, uh, 400. 400. 400? 1,000? Yeah. I think, it, I think it doubles every year. <laughs> Talking about your Twitter uh, or my Twitter? Oh. No. <laughs> anyway, last prediction. I think um, today's the day we discovered a new plant on a new planet. How convenient is that? Oh, that's cool. Interesting. So, uh, a little bit of time travel coming at you, folks. We like you. We like you a lot. Thanks we for tuning like in to 2018. Donate to that Patreon, even if we're dead. Our heirs will take the money. I don't like my heirs. Mm. We'll bury the money with our bodies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Viking Pyre. Thanks for joining us, folks.